Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to another episode of Twitter Trash. Hopefully you're doing well. Uh, got some good tweets lined up. Gonna gonna actually use a few videos. I don't usually do videos that much, but I have a few videos that I want to check out. You know, things that I discovered on Twitter. So uh, it's a be it's a be a good one. It should be pretty wild. But before we get into it, I just want to ask you a favor. If you could please go to my music channel, click on the the I, the information, or just go to the link in the description and hit the like on my latest music cover. Just trying to get it boosted up in the algorithm because the channel overall is doing all right. And I just want to, you know, give it a little bit of a boost. You know, I don't care if you like the song or not. Just give it a little boost. I would appreciate it so much. <laughs> but that's it. Without further ado, let's get into the first one. Supreme victory. So Chunk Yogurt, aka Jank Yogurt, is trying to beef with Ro Jogan, aka Joe Rogan, aka C Biscuit, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> There's just been a little bit of a, a little bit of a thing on Twitter going on, and it's it's really funny. It's the the prospect, the idea of this is just absolute chef's kiss. So I don't know what. Uh, Jank or Chunk is actually referring to because um, he must have been like talking trash beforehand and then a bunch of people got butt hurt which happens all the time especially when it comes to people that idolize people like Joe Rogan or whomever you know it's all a cult of personality but Jank says to all the losers at Joe Rogan fans crying over my attack on his freedom hypocrisy and stupidity are you guys a part of his crew or do you kiss his ass for fun I thought he was a big boy who could handle himself. If he doesn't like my free speech, he can grow up here and defend himself. Now, Jenk knows that this is going to whip all of uh, Joe Rogan's fanboys up into a frenzy because as much as I don't like Jenk at all, I do agree about these people that just like, that everybody has them. Like, uh, what, what did uh, Nicki Minaj, she has her fan base that go crazy for her and go to bat no matter what she says. Doesn't matter how ludicrous it is, they just go to bat for her. Um, uh, who's the, 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 the K-pop people, the K-pop stands, like, they're absolutely insane, K-pop people, the poppers, I don't know what you call a K-pop artist, they can do no wrong in their eyes, and to a lot of people, same with any of these other celebrities, uh, Joe Rogan included, so I understand what he's getting off, but at the same time, since they are fanatics and since they are just a bunch of crazies that feel like they need to defend grown ass men and bitch and moan, you're not gonna get through to them. It's like, like I said, cult of personality. So this guy says, I'll make a $1,000 donation to your trash network or your charity of choice to see you call Rogan, who is not only the most successful podcast in history, but also a black belt in mixed martial arts, a loser to his face. The black belt in mixed martial arts because Joe Rogan absolutely is a black belt in, in Taekwondo, and he's definitely a black belt in Jiu Jitsu. So when you put that into the mix, yeah, that is an intimidating thing to do, to you know talk shit to somebody who could easily dismantle you. Totally get it. So Jank re responds with this. Deal. Easiest 1,000 I ever made. You think he's going to assault me? Sure, whatever. That's incredibly dumb. But also wouldn't work. I'm much larger than Joe, and I've fought my whole life. I'd end him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll send you the P.O. box to send check to later. Now look, I don't know anything about Chunk Yogurt's fighting credentials. He said he's been fighting his whole life. I don't know if he means... I, that can mean any. That can mean so many different things. What, he's just a scrapper? He just goes in street fights all the time? Even with his, you know, Young Turks career, even with him being a part of that, he just goes out and picks fights and fights people on the streets? Or maybe he spars does he certainly doesn't look like he does anything let's be real like maybe some weightlifting maybe does a little bit of weightlifting to kind of have his mass not completely just collapse into a, a gelatinous blob like he's obviously very chunky but he's not like you know he's not like sloppy like completely just he looks like a retired athlete to me. Like, oh, maybe this dude at one point, kind of like Alex Jones, 
used to be top dog, used to be like, oh, he looks really good. And then, you know, the yelling started in, the the alcohol, the anger, you know, and just all that stuff just settled in. And then he just became who he is now. And I just, now we have to focus on Joe Rogan a little bit because it's clear that he doesn't know anything about Joe Rogan's credentials. And at least Joe Rogan has proof. Joe Rogan doesn't even have to say anything because there's proof of him being a badass. I mean, it, even if you go on YouTube, you can see him in his Taekwondo days when he was probably like 18, 19 or whatever, just just kicking the crap out of a dude and he just essentially kills him. <laughs> like, dude looks like he's dead, like he's not getting up anymore. You can see Joe Rogan teaching George St. Pierre, you know, spinning back kicks. Imagine being so well respected for your kicks that one of the greatest mixed martial artists in history is learning from you. Imagine that. And then you know how they have those uh, counters, how you count kicks and stuff like the pressure of it per square inch or whatever it is and see how hard your kicks are. And Joe Rogan with pants on, just like, all right, let me just kick the crap out of this thing. Is pretty much just like holds the world record for those counter things. As far as I'm aware, that's that's actually true. Whether it is true or not, Joe Rogan would snap my shin, anyone's shin, pretty much in half, full force, especially chunk yogurt, you know. And once he snapped it, pretty much Danimals would be shooting out of it and stuff. <laughs> like, it's just... What a silly thing to say that just because you're bigger than Joe Rogan. I don't know how tall Jank is. I have no idea. I really don't know. But one thing we all have learned from the Gracies all the way in the 90s is that it doesn't matter how big you are. It does in certain type of things. If you're going to wrestle, if you're way bigger in wrestling, obviously. But when it comes to a street fight or mixed martial arts, a much bigger person can still be submitted easily by someone who's mastered jujitsu. So it's like, Chunk, I'm assuming you know at least that much about Joe Rogan, that he is entrenched in combat sports. Whether he hasn't competed in infinity billion years is a moot point because he surrounds himself with trained killers all the time probably testing his strength and his abilities all the time. I would never fight Joe Rogan. I would spar him if he was like, hey, let's spar because I know he's not trying to actually hurt me. But in an actual fight where he's like, let's do this, I will say, no, absolutely not. And I will turn on my camera and be like, if you touch me, I'm suing like a bitch. <laughs> I think Jank for putting these thoughts in our head because I want so much Dana White to book something like this now. Now, Dana doesn't like to do wild and wacky circus things unless there's a ton of money involved, which I think there would be a ton of money involved in this. But, you know, ever since uh, CM Punk, he hasn't really done anything like this again, unfortunately. So maybe we need Triller because Triller is a proven circus with one of their events was just pretty much a concert. And then it was like 10 minutes of boxing. And then just, you know, putting on like, oh, Holyfield, he's pretty much, you know, CTE'd out and like just can is stiff as a brick. And let's put him against TRT Vitor Belford and have him get destroyed. Very good, Triller. So I think Jank versus Joe Rogan would be perfect for Triller. So book it. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to see this video. Would you eat this steak knowing that it is Six hundred dollars. So there's a girl on Twitter that uh, she posted some fancy steak that people are like, what the hell are you doing? What is wrong with you? You're flaunting all this dumb shit and it doesn't even look appealing. And so then she posts that video that you just saw and she captioned it with this. Woo, they really gonna be mad when they realize I went back and got an even bigger steak, the $600 one. Lol, some most, what? Some most MFs, MFers, I'm assuming, will never experience because they can't afford to. Listen, broad, 
there's a lot of things you can spend your money on and people won't really give you a you know a hard time if you were to spend six hundred dollars on a watch there's people that would probably be envious and be like damn that's nice i actually really like watches myself you know a really expensive watch i'm an expensive watch to me is like two hundred dollars <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I, I, I do like watches, and something like that, even a $600, I'll be like, oh, wow. And when you get up to, like, the crazy stuff, when you get up to the Rolexes that are worth, like, cars and shit, I'm like, you're, you're, you're completely stupid. But, like, there's tasteful stuff, right? But when you spend $600 on something that you're gonna shit out a few hours later, it is just like, what the hell is wrong with you? Especially when you look at like the gold flakes and stuff like that gold foil or whatever it's not even worth that much essentially what you're paying for is some stupid ass chef to prepare it where somebody that i know named paco or something working at a, a, a taqueria could prepare that steak in the same exact way and you would pay what 10 bucks for it and then if you added a little bit of gold foil oh 40 dollars steak Ooh, here we go but see, that's that's the why people are giving you shit because you're so stupid, and you're so careless with your money that you would rather just do stupid shit like that that you know is not worth it at all, but you just do it just because you can. That's why people don't like you. That's why people are mad because you're stupid. So a long time ago, um, I can't even remember this girl's name, and I don't really even care to remember her name. But it was this black chick. She had braids, and then she had a septum piercing, and. I remember, I think it was called like Yes All White People. It's like a PSA or something. This is like old school. This might even be 2015. This might even be 2015, not even 2016. And largely, it seems like a lot of those people have kind of like pissed off. Like they're not around anymore. At least they're not like say in the forefront of everybody's minds and stuff. But every once in a while, you have stuff slip through the cracks and you have this woman that's from TikTok kind of saying relatively the same type of stuff. So earlier this week, I made a post saying that it doesn't sit right with me, that there are white people who own property, multiple properties at that, in the United States of America, why black and indigenous people are experiencing homelessness. And I wanna expand on that, especially for my new followers who are white, who followed me because of my anti-racist content. I'm glad that you're listening to me, but I really wanna make sure that you're hearing what I'm saying. There will never be black liberation or indigenous sovereignty as long as the United States of America exists. If you want, black folks around the globe and in this country liberated, if you want indigenous folks to be able to have sovereignty over the lands that they're indigenous to, then the United States of America needs to cease to exist. And I don't know if y'all are ready for that. I don't know if that's what y'all signed up for. I'm not sure if anti-racist work is just something you do to uh, lessen the inconvenience of racism in your life, but I hope you're ready for this. It's not for the weak. I just don't have the capacity to deal with these people anymore. Like just these indoctrinated people that are just so, just, you know, they say they're anti-racist, but they're so racist. They're so condescending. They're so like the, the, these ideas that they have in their head are just about like not coexisting or anything or not realizing that they say the United States, right? the united oh the united states is the problem and then just kind of skating past like pretty much every continent has gone through the same stuff the united states being say one of the the latest but as far as say slavery and just subjugation and a lot of crazy stuff that has happened pick a continent pick a continent and see what has happened on that continent basically what you really need is the entire world to just be gone and somehow just start anew and nobody migrates away from the equator so everyone's just dark and then everything is great now it's a dark utopia it's all science fiction at this point it has nothing to do with actual history people are cherry picking stuff they want to think what they want to think they don't care about actually thinking anything further than that indoctrinous bubble that they're being taught from right because just you could go, man, it's there, there, there's slavery going on right now, right? Whether it's, you know, white slavery, and I don't mean by white people, just the type of selling people into slavery, you know, sex trafficking, whatnot. You have, say, countries that have just been destroyed and that are just kind of lawless. And then they're still like, hey, let's sell people. 
This this is great. We can do this. Like there's still horrific problems going on in a lot of places. And this is your priority to speak down to your white allies and and preach that the United States needs to cease to exist. Enable for black and indigenous people to truly be free and to, you know, to be sovereign and own property and it's like shut up bitch shut your mouth you're not contributing anything positive or healthy to the conversation all you're doing is making enemies and <laughs> what am i doing i swear to god i'm like getting ptsd from all the days back then when when there was so much of this rhetoric just rising there's so many people like yeah preach i love fucking uh racism in the opposite direction you know that's definitely gonna fix everything you know how the people were really racist to us we need to do it to them that's gonna fix everything fuck off all right ladies and gentlemen i'm gonna leave it at that one because that just annoyed me <laughs> yeah whatever though thank you guys so much for watching and again just want to remind you if you guys could go to my music channel and just hit a like button on the latest video i would really appreciate it being the world to me if you can leave a comment too it'd be cool if you actually happen to like it i mean that's awesome but really i just want you to do me a favor just hit that like button that's all i care that's all i care about but y'all have a wonderful day and i'll see you in another video very 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 soon all right take care